Hi guys, how we doing? Welcome to The Liz Wheeler Show. I'm Liz Wheeler. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, please do so. Just pull up Apple Podcasts on your phone, get on iTunes on your computer, click that subscribe button. On YouTube, you can find me at Liz Wheeler Show. Hit subscribe over there too. Also on YouTube, if you hit the bell, then I can send you a notification every time we have a new episode, every time I have a new video, every time I have a new interview that's dropping and you won't miss a thing. I really appreciate all the new subscriptions lately. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Okay, what are we going to talk about on the show today? I want to talk about Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian hitting Florida right now. As this hurricane is impacting our fellow Americans, the left claims that hurricanes are more severe and more frequent due to climate change. We hear this from politicians. We hear this from pundits. We hear this, you know, on The View from Don Lemon. We hear this from officials in the Biden administration, the entirety of the trifecta of the left, from big tech to the mainstream media to politicians themselves, leftist politicians, are peddling this talking point. And I thought to myself, as Hurricane Ian, I mean, we're all watching the video of this, right? As it's getting closer and closer to Florida, as it's making landfall, is this true? Does climate change impact the severity and the frequency of hurricanes? And if so, to what extent? What does the science tell us about this, about this matter? And what does, the, what does our history, the empirical evidence that we have about the severity and the frequency of hurricanes and their landfall in the United States, what does that tell us? What's the bigger picture here? So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the facts of the matter because it's easy to make a viral clip if you're on the left, claiming that climate change causes these disasters, even having a little chuckle moment to yourself, as some on the left are, that this is happening in Florida, where DeSantis is governor, since DeSantis is a quote-unquote climate change denier. But I just want to stick to the facts so that we know how to respond to these clips. Let's get to it. Okay. So I like Bambi, and I think you will too, because small business owners, have you ever had an issue with employee attendance? Have you ever had an employee altercation in the workplace? Have you ever been confused on how to handle a situation with an employee? Or have you ever had employee performance issues? Who among us hasn't? Have you ever been stressed about navigating through HR compliance? Well, the bad news today is that one complaint against your company can turn your whole world upside down. The good news is Bambi is here to help small business owners implement good HR practices. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses just like yours, so you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. This is how it works. First, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies. I'm talking about workplace training, employee feedback. Then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and then guide you to compliance. They're available by phone, by email, by real-time chat, As you know, an in-house HR manager can cost up to $80,000 a year, which is unaffordable to many small business owners. But with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. No hidden fees. You can cancel anytime. You run your business. Let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com slash Liz right now, and you can get a free HR audit. It's spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash Liz. Bambi.com slash Liz. Okay, before we get into hurricanes, and climate change, and the politics of the thing, and the science of the thing. Did you guys see that video of Joe Biden? He was at the White House conference on hunger, nutrition, and health, and he started calling for a, he started calling the name of a dead woman. And so many of you know so much about this as well, and you're committed. And I want to thank all of you here for including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Oh. Congresswoman Jackie Wilarski of Indiana died on August 3rd, 2022, almost two months ago, in a tragic and horrific car accident. Biden is somehow unaware of this. But the thing is, the reason this is so cringy, the reason this video is going viral and that everyone is just another example of Biden's lack of mental acuity. I mean, the guy is not with it. He has no idea what's going on, no idea of what's going on around him. And what's worse is 
On August 3rd, the White House issued a press release on behalf of Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden offering condolences for the death of Congresswoman Wilarski. This is what they said. Statement from President Biden on the passing of Congresswoman Jackie Wilarski of Indiana. Jill and I are shocked and saddened by the death of Congresswoman Jackie Wilarski of Indiana, along with two members of her staff in a car accident today in Indiana. Born in her beloved South Bend as the daughter of a meat cutter and firefighter, she spent a lifetime serving the community that she grew up in as a journalist, a nonprofit director, a state legislator, and eventually as a member of Congress for the past nine and a half years. We may have represented different parties and disagreed on many issues, but she was respected by members of both parties for her work, et cetera, et cetera. So he issued a press release, but the worst part of all of this, we see this video, I'm sure you feel the same way, and we think, oh God, he has no idea what he's talking about. He's completely, his mind is completely absent. He's separated from reality. The guy has dementia. He has serious mental is issues. Generations to come in our country, our children and grandchildren will look back at this and be like, WTF, are you kidding me? People just allowed him to be president and pretended like he was okay. He had no idea probably that this press release was even issued, which just shows us that he has no idea what's happening at his White House, that his handlers are making all the decisions about what he says, how he says things, and when he is to say them. It's only when he goes off script, which he clearly did here, there was clearly a list of names written on that teleprompter that he was reading. You could see his eyes going back and forth. And then he came to Jackie Wilarski's name and he looks for Jackie Wilarski because he has absolutely no idea what's going on in the country. This is, this is not just a faux pas. If this was just a gaffe, okay, you're in, front of, you're in front of cameras all the time. I get it. If you live in front of cameras, you're a human being. You're gonna say things inarticulately. You might make a mistake. You, you're, you're not, a, you're not Google, a Google search. You don't have all the facts and all the information in front of you at all times, even if you understand the, the overarching concepts of what you're talking about. I get that. I live in front of the I live in front of the camera too, not as much as the president of the United States, but this is what I do for a living. I, I certainly understand how you can misspeak. But this is like the trillionth time Biden has done this. It's not one time, once a year, maybe. He does this every time he's in front of the camera. Every time he opens his mouth, it's one of these gaffes. He's completely out of it. And then, same day, Biden's making a speech in front of a podium. He finishes his speech and he doesn't know where to go. Dr. Jill said, you go this way. This is how I speak to my kid. My kid is a toddler. She's one. That exact scene is exactly what it's like when you are parenting a toddler. First, the toddler looks around, disoriented, not exactly sure where to go. So you take the toddler's hand and you say, come on, honey, this is the way you go. And then they're a little bit slower than you, so you go ahead and you make your way down the steps and they sort of look around, follow you slowly as you walk away. And you say, follow mama, come on, come this way, follow mama. That's exactly what Jill Biden is doing to Joe Biden. Joe Biden has the mind of a toddler. He is completely disconnected from reality. What Jill Biden is doing is she is engaging in elder abuse. Joe Biden is obviously a puppet. I'm, I'm certain of this. The way Joe Biden is portrayed when he is in public is probably the best version, the most coherent version of Joe Biden. I bet when he's behind the scenes, he's, a, he's an absolute vegetable. Then they, they give him some kind of drug, some kind of, some kind of caffeine. I don't know what they give him. Just so that he can possibly make these short scripted appearances and then get him out of there as quickly as possible. But he's, he's out of it. He's disoriented. And so who is second in line? Who is second in line for the presidency should something happen to Joe Biden? This woman. Today, the business of our work is for the council to report on the work that has occurred since our last meeting across these areas. We will today also discuss the work yet ahead, the work we must still do to continue to move forward. The business of our work is for the council to report on the business we have conducted 
We also will discuss the business of the work that we have yet to do. What? What? <laughs> this is who, this is the number one and the number two in charge of our country. If I'm Vladimir Putin right now, I, I sit there with popcorn watching these people. If I'm Xi Jinping, I just tell everyone around me, all the communists, ramp it up, guys. We're not going to be stopped by these fools. This is, this is who is in charge. The people in charge of our country right now have no problem abusing elders. They have no problem in exploiting people of color and women to be token representatives based on gender and the color of their skin. These people who are in charge of our country right now don't just want to control Joe Biden, don't just want to control Kamala Harris. They want to control you too, and they don't care if you get hurt in the process. Let's talk about the January 6th committee. We were going to do an entire show about the January 6th committee hearing. It was supposed to be a primetime extravaganza, and they canceled it. So I'm going to talk about that in a second, but first I want to talk to you about Incogni. Two things that are really important to me online are safety and privacy. That's why I like Incogni. Thousands of companies are collecting, aggregating, and trading your personal data without you knowing anything about it. Maybe you subscribed for a free newsletter, and shortly thereafter, you started receiving lots of spam from unknown email addresses, unknown senders. Or maybe you searched for medical information online, and then you started seeing ads all over your screen about it from places you never visited. This happens to me, and I find it to be the creepiest thing ever. The good news is, is you do have the right to request these data brokers to delete what information they have about you and therefore protect your privacy. The bad news is it would take you years to do this manually. The best news is Incogni can do the messy work for you automatically. Incogni helps you protect your privacy and take your personal data off the market by reaching out to the data brokers on your behalf, requesting your personal data removal, and then dealing with the inevitable objections of the data brokers themselves. Now, remember, most often these data brokers hold your name, your first and last name, your email address, your home address, your mailing address, your phone number, even the names of your relatives, your social security number, your employment history, your shopping habits, it's gross, it's creepy. You need Incogni, I love it, I know you will too. The first 100 people to use my URL, incogni.com slash Liz Wheeler, and use my promo code Liz, get 20% off Incogni, it's a really good deal. Protect your privacy today, go to incogni.com slash Liz Wheeler and use code Liz Wheeler to take your personal data off the market. Today's video is sponsored by Incogni. So the January 6th committee hearing, I we talked about it, guys, earlier in the week. We were planning on doing a live stream watch party because Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger and all the rest of them were going to host another show trial 1 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. It was scheduled. At the last second on Tuesday night, they canceled it. Even though this was supposed to be, this was supposed to be like a Broadway show for us. We were all going to be miserable together because it's it, it's fun to watch this stuff when you have like-minded people to watch with or to watch with you. However, the January 6th committee canceled this, and when I first saw the headline, I thought, oh, I, I wonder why. I wonder what, <laughs> what witness they had coerced into telling some stupid, probably false story backed out, or what exactly happened here. But then they said that the reason that they canceled was they cited Hurricane Ian in Florida, which seemed a little suspect to me because I thought, okay, well, what would that have to do with your hearing? The people on your, on your, on your committee aren't from Florida. They don't need to be in Florida. So what does that have to do with what you're doing? What is this hurricane? With all due respect to all the people of Florida who are suffering from this. And I thought, well, they're probably worried. I'm sure that the reason that Hurricane Ian is actually a problem for the January 6th committee is because they're worried that the hurricane is just going to get more headlines from the mainstream media than their committee hearing. That, I'm sure, is the reason why. Let me just say, we eagerly await the rescheduling of this hearing. We will have a watch party. We will have a live stream. We will completely expose your lies and debunk this false narrative that you're trying to use to target not only Donald Trump, but every Trump supporter, half of the U.S. population. We are here. We are waiting. So Hurricane Ian, though. Let's talk about Hurricane Ian. And first, I just want to extend, you know, I'm, we're praying for you, everyone in Florida. We are, we're watching. I always feel a little helpless when natural disasters happen. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I always feel a little bit helpless because you want to do something. You want to help in some way, and yet there's not always a way to help in the moment until afterward when you see what help is needed. So um, if anybody watching this or listening to this knows of a need that we can fill, let us know. Post on Locals. We want, as a group, 
everyone who watches and listens to this show, including me, um, we want to be of what help we can. So let us know. And we're, we're praying for you, of course, everyone in Florida. Uh, the political left and the mainstream media, of course, want to make this, this hurricane political. They try to make everything political. They're saying, oh, this is a test for DeSantis. Maybe DeSantis will fail this test. They're already trying to compare DeSantis, even before the hurricane has happened, before DeSantis has responded to an event that hasn't yet actually happened. They're trying to compare DeSantis and Hurricane Ian to Bush and Hurricane Katrina. Well, the mainstream media is very desperate, and that's why they do this. But he's been DeSantis has been totally fine. He's handled. He's been governor of Florida for several years. He's handled other environmental issues or natural disasters. And he's been totally fine, which the left knows is probably why the View, the only criticism the View. <laughs> could concoct is to criticize old quotes from DeSantis in which he said that he was not sitting in the pew of the climate change church. This is the quote from Governor DeSantis yeah. about climate change. Quote, I am not in the pews of the church of the global warming leftists. This is what he thinks about climate change. And now his state is getting hit with one of the worst hurricanes well, that they will ever so, first of all, the only people that are politicizing this hurricane are the left. The only politicians who are trying to blame other politicians for an act of nature are leftist politicians. But what the, what the view is doing here is, I mean, I don't have a high expectation from, from, for the arguments from the ladies on the view, but what they're doing is they're engaging in a, in a rhetorical fallacy. They are conflating the science of climate, environmental science, with the proposed political policies. Now, those are two very different things. You can, you can look at the climate of our Earth, and you can say, yeah, there's, there's incremental changes, and there, there are cyclical changes, and maybe even there's a gradual warming of the surface temperature of the Earth. That may be true. But you can acknowledge that, and then separately, you can say, okay, well, here's the reality of what we're facing. How do we as a political entity, meaning the government of the United States, how do we respond to this? What's the proper prescription for this? Is there anything that we can do? Should we be doing anything? And if so, what, what, what should we do? And what the left does, what the ladies on The View do, is they like to pretend that if you and I sit here and say, well, we certainly don't want to pass the Green New Deal in response to incremental warming of the temperature, the surface temperatures of the earth, if we don't want to pass the Green New Deal, we don't want to pass Medicare for all, we don't want to turn the United States into a nation that doesn't eat meat, but instead eats bugs in the name of climate change that discard, or that is prohibited from driving gas-powered cars and uses only windmills for energy and faces rolling blackouts. If we don't want those political policies in response to the incremental warming of the surface of the earth, then we are called climate change deniers. So what DeSantis was doing, of course, is he was saying, well, no, I don't treat political policy as the gospel. I don't treat politicians and the policies that they propose as a scientific law, because it's not. They're political policies, and coincidentally, political policies that just happen to align with the radical leftist Marxist policy desires that the left already held outside of climate change. So that's, of course, what The View is doing. Again, the only people making this political are the left. Don Lemon over at CNN, he did the same thing, and he actually got schooled on his own show, which is like a double whammy. It's always fun to see a leftist be schooled, but a leftist being schooled on their home court, on his own show, it's a sight to behold. Can you tell us what this is and what effect the climate change has on this phenomenon? We, we can come back and talk about climate change uh, at a later time. I want to focus on the here and now. We think the rapid intensification is probably almost done. There could be a little bit more intensification as it's still over the warm waters of the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico, but I don't think we're going to get any more rapid intensification. If you look here, you can actually see, pretty interesting for your viewers, you can actually see a second eye wall forming around the inner eye wall, and that's basically the second eye wall has overtaken the original eye wall, and that should arrest development. Uh, so listen, I just, I'm just trying to get that you said you want to talk about climate change, but what, what effect does climate change have on this phenomenon that, that is happening now? Because it seems these storms are intensifying. That's the question. Here. I don't think you can link climate change to any one event. Okay. 
on the whole, on the cumulative, uh, climate change uh, may be making storms worse, uh, but um, to link it to any one event, um, I, I would caution against that. Okay, well, they, uh, listen, I grew up there, and these storms are intensifying. Something is causing them to int intensify. So this storm is just, it's a massive one. Its effects are also being felt uh, in the southern part of Florida. What about the areas that, that may not be taking a direct hit or experiencing the storm surge like on the west coast? How much will the rest of the state be impacted? Yeah, that's actually a good question because um, we flip out to this other graphic. You can see uh, this orange area is the size. So if you think about how big the wind field is, and you can just see how big that wind field is relative to traditional hurricanes. And as that moves up and over the Florida Peninsula into the southeast United States, you can see this big area, uh, blue area of tropical storm warnings. Um, so it's really going to be a big event. <laughs> I mean, it just cracks me up to watch this, right? Because on one side of the page, you have you have the director of the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association National Hurricane Center, the director of that center. And on the other hand, on the other side of the page, you have this silly little CNN pundit who responds to the NOAA di Hurricane Center director's scientific analysis of how climate change impacts hurricanes. He responds by saying, uh, nah, uh I grew up there. It looks like these storms are worse to me. I don't know how you can dismiss that. The look on Don Lemon's face when this, this NOAA individual, and NOAA, by the way, is a very radically left, very climate changey organization funded by the federal government. These are not like conservatives, this guy. If, if, these, if the people at NOAA are dismissing the claim from leftist politicians and pundits that climate change is directly responsible for this particular hurricane, oh man, oh man, do these leftist politicians, they have jumped the shark on this one. But I mean, first reparations, you guys saw that video from a week or two ago, right, where Don Lemon was asking, um, was asking a British woman, well, should we start thinking about reparations, what reparations black people deserve for the history for being enslaved, for being taken from Africa and enslaved. Should white people pay reparations? And he was completely schooled on that. The woman said, well, if you want to talk about who's to blame, you should talk about the African warlords who sold their population, their people into slavery. They might owe reparations. And Don Lemon just didn't even know what to say because his poor political ideology is crumbling all around him. That's what happens when you are, um, when you are an empty intellectual, we'll call him, when you are a, a silly CNN pundit. Okay, but let's talk about the actual science. So we know Don Lemon is wrong. We know the view is wrong. Clearly, they don't know what they're talking about. But what is the reality? Does climate change, does the incremental warming of the surface temperature of the Earth, does it cause hurricanes to be more frequent? Does it cause them to be more severe? What is the history of this in the United States particularly? We're going to talk about that data in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you about Beam Organics. Did you know that poor sleep can cause weight gain, mood issues, poor mental health, and lower productivity? Nobody wants any of that. If you sleep less than six to seven hours per night, it can be linked to reduced white blood cell count. So not many people realize this, but having a consistent nighttime routine is so important, not just to how you feel, but to how healthy your body is overall. Well, let me tell you, a better tomorrow, regardless of what yesterday was like, a better tomorrow starts tonight. Let me introduce you to Beam Dream. Beam is the world's most innovative functional wellness brand with unique products from everything, from sleep to recovery. And today, you get a special discount available for Beam's sleep product. It's called Dream Powder. It is their best-selling healthy hot cocoa. It contains natural, sleep-promoting, premium ingredients. It's triple lab tested, no THC. And you wake up refreshed. Guys, this is the statistic that really sold it to me. 98% of people surveyed fall asleep faster when taking Beam Dream. And 99% of people experience better sleep quality. You can't argue with data, unless, of course, you are Don Lemon. <laughs> Just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir, and enjoy 30 minutes before bedtime. If you don't love it, you can get your money back. For a limited time, get $20 off when you go to beamorganics.com slash Liz and use code Liz at checkout. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash Liz and use code Liz for $20 off at checkout. Okay, so what does the science say? What does the data say? What does the history tell us about this question? Does climate change impact the severity and the frequency of hurricanes? And if so, how much impact does climate change have? It would sort of be a third question to say, and if 
climate change does impact the severity and frequency? And if the impact is significant enough, is there anything that we politically can do to stop this? That's sort of a third question. Let's answer the first two questions first. So Michael Schellenberger, you may have heard of him. He is an environmental scientist. He's not conservative, by the way. He ran for governor in California. I wish that he had won. He ran for governor in California against Gavin Newsom because Gavin Newsom is so far to the left that anybody who is not a Marxist is going to hate Gavin Newsom and what Gavin Newsom has done to the state of California. I'm not gonna unleash on you my, you know my rant about California. I freaking love California, it's paradise, but look at what the radical left has done to it. They are ruining it. The only reason there is there are even 10 people left in the state is because of how amazing the state is that people stay despite the radical leftists, but, but people are leaving. I left, my husband left. A lot of conservatives got the heck out of that. Look at Texas, look at, look at Florida, people, look at Idaho. People are fleeing because of what the radical left is doing to California. Michael Schellenberger tried to run against Gavin Newsom. I hope that he runs again because I think that he would do a good job for the state of California. But he, what, what he's done recently, and this is actually just within the last 10 years, that he started speaking up against other climate scientists, other environmentalists, because he saw that data was being misrepresented, that studies were not done in a methodologically sound way, and that climate change alarmism did not align with actual science, did not align with history, that it was becoming a more political, uh, a, a political hatchet job. It, it was, to use the word that the left always claims, it, it was a hoax, the way that the left was perpetuating it. So Michael Schellenberger and his crew created a website called Environmental Progress, it's environmentalprogress.org. I'll post the link to it in local so that everybody can see it. Highly recommend you visit this website. And they go through the data part, bit by bit, graphic by graphic, part by part, and debunk all of the narratives that are coming from the radical left. So I want to go through a few of these um, with you right now. Again, anybody who wants to look at this themselves can go to environmentalprogress.org. We're going to go through the particular piece, the case against environmental alarmism. So one of the one of the premises on which the climate change alarmism narrative is built is that our carbon emissions are increasing at such a pace that we are risking we are risking the end of the world by 2030 if we don't cut back on our carbon emissions if we don't become carbon neutral. Now, if you look at this is this is a little sidebar before we get to before we get to the first graph. If you look at the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their report from 2018, that's the report from which the radical left took this narrative, took this, um, that's, that's the report from which the left created their, their climate change alarmism their current climate change alarmism. They're, they created the narrative that said, oh, look, if you, don't, if you don't stop, if you don't stop driving cars, if you don't pass the Green New Deal, by 2030, we're going to be past the point of no return. If you actually look at the UN report, that's not true. The UN says nothing of the kind. They say, oh, we need to cut carbon emissions because we think that carbon emissions have a detrimental effect on the environment. But they never say that by 2030, we will be past the point of no return or that it will cause the apocalypse, the end of the world. So at the very base level, the narrative that we hear from climate change alarmists is just incorrect. So then we get to some of these graphs from environmental progress. The first one shows that actually global carbon emissions are not increasing. Global carbon emissions are in decline. So many of the policies intended to cut carbon emissions are working. You can see these, these graphs for yourself. So we're told that we're taking this trajectory like a rocket that can't be stopped, up, up, up and away, but that's not true. You can see the graph goes down at the end. So that's just a little, a little debunking of the premise. So let's get to natural disasters and their tie into climate change. You will see, this is photo number two for the control room. You will see that the global annual death rate from natural disasters by decade shows that in the 2010s, we have the lowest rate of people dying from natural disasters in the entire previous 110 years. So this idea that hurricanes or droughts or wildfires or earthquakes or tsunamis are becoming so frequent and so severe 
because of climate change that they threaten our lives. That is simply not true. In fact, I mean, look at the 1920s or the 1930s or the 1940s compared to right now. In the 1990s, the 2000s and the 2010s, it's very, very small. That's all around the world too. That's not just in the United States. So are more people dying from natural disasters? No, the opposite. Fewer people than ever before are dying from natural disasters. So then we look at the natural disasters themselves, not just the impact or the fatality of the natural disasters. From this next, this is photo number three, global weather and climate disasters from the year 2000 to 2021. We're talking modern, up-to-date data here. What does this show? Look at the red line. The trajectory goes very gradually down. So in the last 20 years, climate disasters and global weather events have not become more frequent and more severe they have decreased. Now, this is not political unless you make it political. This is simply the science and the history of the thing combined to form empirical evidence that shows us the reality. Now, the reality contradicts the political agenda of the left and the political narrative the left has created, and we'll get to all of that shortly, but this is the data. And then, of course, we have the argument. We have the argument that, you know what, because we have developed so much as a nation, and not not just our nation, but all around the world, because we are so prosperous, we've built infrastructure, so much infrastructure, that when we have a natural disaster, particularly a hurricane, but a tornado as well, that it costs more. It's more devastating because we've built more things. So take Miami Beach, for example. Miami Beach 100 years ago was virtually empty. Now it's a skyline, a skyline of high-rise buildings and other establishments. So if a hurricane came through that area, of course it would be more devastating now than 100 years ago because there are more people and more structures, more infrastructure there to be damaged. Not because the hurricane itself is necessarily different, but because our society is different. So let's look at the cost then. Is this actually true? Is the cost of hurricanes, is that what's increased? The cost because of our increased infrastructure? Well, photo number four here shows, no. The cost of disasters around the world is actually declining. Look at that red line again. Now, as in any chart, there are ups and downs. There are years that have higher numbers and years that have lower numbers. And that's why it's important to look at the graph, the scientifically, the statistically accurate line. Because the line takes into account the fluctuation per year and tells us what's happening. It's declining. So the cost of disasters is declining even as our infrastructure increases. Okay, so let's talk about hurricanes now. And not just hurricanes, but hurricanes specifically in the United States. Do we have more hurricanes? in the United States, more hurricanes that are impacting our shores. So we have more hurricane landfalls in the United States than before, because if the premise that the left is telling us that climate change causes more frequent hurricanes and more severe hurricanes, then we would have more hurricane landfalls in the United States. Well, photo number five, landfalling hurricanes in the United States have declined. This is an analysis that is 120 years of data land-falling U.S. hurricanes have declined. So how do you marry this, this data, with this narrative that we hear from the left, that hurricanes are more severe and more frequent? When we have data that shows that hurricanes making landfall in the United States have declined over the course of the past 120 years. I see no way to marry those two things. And when I have to choose between two pieces of information, I look and I say, okay, well, what is based on empirical evidence, based on actual science, based on reality, and what is someone's opinion or someone's policy preference or someone's political agenda? The two things, if you can't marry those two things, you should pick the science. You shouldn't pick the Democrats' political narrative. So then let's look at the world all around. Maybe it's not just the United States. Maybe the landfall of the hurricanes has impacted other countries. Well, photo number six shows that there has been no trend in global major hurricane frequency. All around the world, countries have experienced the same thing as the United States. There is no upward trend in the frequency of these hurricanes. This contradicts everything the left is saying. 
I would love to hear Don Lemon and The View respond to this. How do you look at this chart and think that climate change is responsible for what's happening in Florida? And then we have the United Nations. You guys know how I feel about the United Nations. I think we all agree that the United Nations is a complete waste. Maybe maybe it was useful at the time. Maybe it's hard to go back in history and make decisions like that. I think the United Nations should be defunded at this point. The World Health Organization is a joke. The Human Rights Council is a joke. And yet the United States, of course, pays the vast majority of dues at the United Nations. The United Nations has the inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and even this leftist organization that is a leftist panel on climate change found, quote, this is photo number seven, no consensus on the relative magnitude of human influence on hurricane activity. This is what they say. There is still no consensus on the relative magnitude of human and natural influences on past changes in Atlantic hurricane activity, and particularly on which factor has dominated the observed increase, and it remains unclear whether past changes in Atlantic activity are outside the range of natural variability. Okay, so even when even the UN says it, come on, Don Lemon. Even the UN says, it remains uncertain whether past changes in Atlantic hurricane activity are outside the range of natural variability. You know those, those charts we just saw where some years had more, some years had fewer? That's natural variability. And again, let's go back to the cost, not just of natural disasters in general, but hurricanes specifically. Let's just look at hurricanes very narrowly. Photo number eight shows no increase in the cost of hurricane-specific damage. So this excludes tornadoes, this excludes tsunamis, this in, it excludes everything else that is a natural disaster, a drought or a flood or a fire, just hurricane damage, no increase of cost. Natural variability, sure, you can see that. I mean, look at 1926 compared to, you know, 1976, obviously very different, natural variability. But from 1900 to 2020, there's been no increase in cost. That's actually amazing to me that we have proactively put in place mitigation systems to help us when, when natural disasters do strike so that we don't suffer the amount of damage monetarily that we might have had we not taken the mitigation efforts. That's actually what politicians should be applauded for, that we know how to respond to some of these, to some of these natural disasters. But of course, the left doesn't, doesn't want to, to look at what has actually helped people and what could help people even more. They only are interested in their own Marxist agenda, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk just a second. Outside of hurricanes, if we're not just talking about hurricanes, we hear a lot about heat waves, we hear a lot about droughts. Um, those are two of the natural disasters the left likes to constantly tie to climate change. So in photo number nine, we have evidence that there is no trend in U.S. heat wave frequency or magnitude, meaning we're not seeing, we're not seeing this increase. This isn't something that, oh, climate change is making it hotter. Like, nope, you can look at the numbers. It's actually decreasing, if anything, but really no change. It's just kind of natural variation and it is what it is. The same thing over in Europe with droughts in Europe. We heard that a lot this past year. Oh, climate change, responsible for the droughts. Nope, photo number 10 uh, shows that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says droughts are not increasing in Europe. This is what they say. In areas of Western and Central Europe and Northern Europe, there's no evidence of changes in the severity of hydrological droughts since 1950. Okay, so for the past 70 years, there's been just natural variation, no difference. So my question now, we have this data. This is pretty good data. Again, kudos to Michael Schellenberger for putting all this together. Go to um, his website if you want to see more of this. This was a, a fraction of what he used. Go to um, environmentalprogress.org, the case against environmental alarmism, to see the rest. But my question is, what data are the climate alarmists using in order to build their climate alarmist narrative? Where are their charts? Where are their graphs? Where's the empirical evidence that they've pulled from history to back up the claims that climate change is basically making Hurricane Ian because DeSantis isn't a global warming freak? That's, that, I'm pretty sure that's what the leftist narrative is at this point. Well, the thing is, they can't show this data, and they're unwilling to discuss this data. They won't engage in any discourse because half of them are just stupid, and they've fallen for the narrative. The other half of them have maybe repeated the lie so many times to themselves that they have started to believe it. 
but they ignore the science. Their claims are actually anti-science. And, and what's interesting here is if you ask the question, who is it exactly who's peddling the most alarmist narrative? The answer is not climatologists. The answer is not environmental scientists. The answer is not biologists. The answer is the politicians are. So these people, and not that politicians can't have opinions about the scientific field. They can, just like you and I can. But it's funny because you don't hear as many environmental scientists peddling this narrative as you do the Al Gores and the Greta Thunbergs and the Gavin Newsoms and the View and the Don Lemons, these radical leftist politicians, pundits, and activists. You also hear this from the Biden administration. Yes, the same Biden administration that's, you know, pulling the, the puppet strings for Biden as he, as he calls to a dead woman in a very cringy moment. On stage, the same Biden administration that controls Biden wants to control you. The White House spokesperson, John Kirby, peddled this exact same narrative, but he actually had the audacity to tie it to political action that Republicans are unwilling to take. Uh, you, and you're seeing it now, even in the wildfires, uh, where, where so many National Guardsmen are being called out. And, and, and uh, God love them for that. But they're, those are important tasks and missions, but it takes away from other tasks and missions when it comes to defending the United States. Um, so there's, a, there's an impact on our own readiness just because our, our troops, uh, our sailors, our Marines, our airmen, our Coast Guardsmen are being called out for, to respond to natural disasters, which are getting worse because of climate change. And then lastly, it's a driver of actual missions because uh, climate change uh, creates uh, instability, which creates insecurity in some places, and you can end up, the, the, the fighting in Syria uh, started really as a result of a drought. Um, and so there's, uh, there's a, it, it can actually drive military missions and, and, and force the military to become involved in places and at times uh, where they wouldn't have had, had to otherwise. So he says natural disasters are worse due to climate change. The war in Syria happened due to climate change. First of all, that's just false. That is not accurate. That is not true. Natural disasters obviously are not worse due to climate change. But the part of that that's really important was his last sentence. It wouldn't have happened had we take a, taken other actions. Oh, so what are those other actions, Mr. Kirby, that we could have taken that would have prevented this, the war in Syria? The other actions that he's talking about are embracing the radical leftist climate change agenda, pushing through the Green New Deal, putting us all on Medicare for all, government-run healthcare, telling us that we can't eat meat and drive gas-powered cars, spreading the wealth around, socialism, this would have saved us, right? Those are the, this, this net zero carbon, getting us off fossil fuels, just putting us on, on renewable energy, wind and solar, which is not able to actually power our country to the extent that we need. It would take us back to pre-industrial revolution times. We would have food shortages and medication rationing. This, this is what he's advocating for. So that sentence, it wouldn't have happened if we had taken other actions. Those are the actions that he's talking about. That's the most important part because this is, this is the crux of the matter. Climate change, the way that the left describes it is actually a hoax. We're not talking about the question of, oh, is there incremental warming? in the surface temperature of the Earth? Well, sure, we can see that empirically. Is that natural variation or is that caused by man's actions? Well, you can debate that. I know that there are good faith arguments on both sides of that. But the key here is that the radical left doesn't care about good faith arguments. They don't care about science. They don't care about history. They don't care about natural variation. They only care about using this climate change alarmist narrative to try to scare you into allowing them to push through their Marxist policies. So the takeaway from this today is no, Hurricane Ian was not caused by climate change. No, the solution to incremental warming of the surface temperature of the Earth is not the Green New Deal. Climate change alarmism is not science. It's anti-science. All the science disproves the alarmist narratives coming from the left. It, it, it really is a political hoax. I don't just say this word to trigger the left, although if it happens to trigger the left, then... So be it. I don't hate that. But I don't, I don't just say this to trigger the left. I say it because it's an accurate descriptor of what we are facing. It's intended to frighten people into giving government control. There, there's a reason that the left blames everything, all social ills, on climate change. They say sexism due to climate change, racism due to climate change, gun violence also due to climate change, poverty due to climate change, health issues due to climate change. Most of these things, by the way, 
are caused by sin, not caused by an outside factor. They're caused by people's choices, or, or they're caused by sinful politicians who are implementing dumb and harmful policies in order to gain themselves money and or power. But what is the leftist prescription for their premise that climate change is a crisis? This is the question that we should ask every time. What is your prescription? And the leftist prescription, Medicare for all, the Green New Deals, don't eat red meat anymore, no more hamburgers, but here's a bug burger for you some little grasshopper, dried grasshoppers to snack on, maybe some seaweed and algae, no air travel, no gas-powered cars, switch that out for an electric vehicle, but only temporarily until you're not gonna be allowed to own a personal vehicle at all and you're gonna have to just take mass transit. You won't even have to take mass transit because the left wants to destroy the suburbs in the name of climate change. You'll be able to just, you know, walk across the street where your kids are growing up in a high-rise apartment and you can just, you know, take public transit that comes in right into your backyard. Which sounds like heaven for a young family, doesn't it? They want to, the left wants to tax people for carbon emissions. Now, the natural end of trying to label every person's existence and life as a crime against the climate, the, the natural end of that, not only, it, it's very anti-human, right? But the natural end of that is also anti-human. The natural conclusion would be population control. That if they blame people just for living, for the carbon emissions that you naturally emit by your life, then they're going to want to limit the population. Otherwise, the, the earth won't survive. That's for individuals. For businesses, they'll have carbon, ta carbon credits, which means you are allotted a certain amount of carbon emissions and you aren't allowed to exceed that. It's their way of controlling businesses. They control the business of climate change through ESG. We talk about ESG a lot on this show. They're going to redistribute wealth, of course, because... Every social evil is caused by climate change, and every social evil, in their mind, can be fixed by socialism and Marxism. They will, of course, censor climate change denialism, which is not denying science, but, but contradicting or opposing the political policies the left wants to use to address climate change, but not really climate change. Leftist politicians will be in charge of everything forever if we give them all this power. This is why I call it a hoax. It is nothing but a vanguard for Marxism. It's the same, the same people, by the way, pulling those strings on President and Vegetable want to control you too. And they're using climate change alarmism as a medium to seize control of you. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. Ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.